Well, how do you flea bitten varmints? In this quick video, we'll be making a glycol system. <laughs> Welcome to Open Source Distilling, where time-honored tradition meets modern-day technology. Please consider subscribing to follow my progress on building a fully robotic reflux still operating on open source technology. In this video, we'll be looking at a makeshift glycol system that I built out of some extra parts and a cheap pump from Amazon. This system is using custom Python code that I wrote myself. It's got a Raspberry Pi, a DS18B20 as the temp probe. And how it works is it takes the temperature and then it runs code that actually has the ability to cut power going to the USB ports. So this crappy pump plugs directly into the Raspberry Pi and uh, there's no need for extra relays or anything like that. In all honesty, there's probably easier ways to do this than what I did. But I really wanted to see if I could just power and control the pump without any external hardware except for the Raspberry Pi. Now in the first round in the data that I'm going to pop up on the screen here, the fermentation went through and there wasn't any interruptions to the programs, no errors. And that won't be the case in the next video where I cover this topic again. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that video when it comes out. I'm also aware that there are many products out there, open source products, that already address this type of uh, fermentation issue, but I wanted to get my hands dirty, wanted to get into coding a little bit, and I thought this would be a good excuse to get started. I got a $6 roll of bubble wrap from Walmart. I just wrap it around my fermentation bucket, and this is going to act like insulation to try and keep the coldness in. When I finally got everything assembled, I did put like some plastic wrap around the outside to keep everything nice and tight. So I've had this old stainless steel coil kicking around for like a couple years. I never used it. When I'm brewing beer, I always tend to use my copper coil. So on the lid, I'm gonna punch a couple holes for the coil to go through. I'm gonna put a hole for the airlock and a small hole for the temp probe. Now, spoiler alert, this lid turns out not to be airtight, but in the next video for the fermentation uh, temperature control video I, I release, I do up a new bucket and we solve that issue. Now this Amazon pump is so crappy. It's about 0.75 watts, 150 milliamps. It's powered by the USB port and it can pump water like maybe a couple feet upwards, like vertically. So initially I tried to put this sump pump further down into this keg and honestly it just stopped working. So I had to keep the pump close to the, the top of the water level. So it really is slow and steady is totally fine to win this race. For this test I ended up doing some organic cider. Just store bought apple juice, some wine yeast, some nutrient. It just so happened that I was installing a brand new dishwasher in my kitchen. So I pulled the insulation off the old dishwasher, I wrapped it around here, and then I had this winter coat. So I put the jacket on, zipped it up. Now if we pop over to the Excel graph, we'll see three different lines. We have the set point going horizontal. It's kind of like an orangey red color. We've got the blue line, which kind of uh, zigzags up and down. That is the temperature. And then we have the line at the bottom, and that is uh, an indication of whether the pump is turned on or turned off. So you can see it looks like little tiny spikes. And you can see right here is where I put the jacket on. So you can see the intervals at which the pump turned on. Those intervals grew in size, meaning we didn't need as much cooling when we had the insulation and jacket all zipped up tight. Now I've done some calculations and it would appear that I could probably sustain two or three of these fermentation vessels provided that they were insulated well. Again, I know that there are open source uh, products out here that already address this fermentation issue, but I really wanted to get my hands dirty, get into some coding, and really build something that made alcohol in some sense or another. In the next temperature controlled fermentation vessel video, Again, we'll be looking at 
a new lid, and we'll be looking at some issues that popped up and how I plan to address them in future videos. Check out my blog post in the description for more information. I'm currently working on the Python code a little bit more, but I'll eventually release it to my GitHub so you guys can see it. And I'm also looking at adding some text messages uh, as a type of error reporting to this project as well. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you're having a great day, and I love each and every one of you very, very much. <laughs>